Well, welcome everyone to our final council meeting of uh, November 1st, 2022. Uh, unfortunately, Councillor Van Passen has just had to step away. He's had a family emergency that he uh, sadly has had to depart for. Um, but uh, with that, we will uh, carry on with business today. Uh, first, I'm going to uh, need a mover and a seconder to approve the agenda with the following uh, changes. Item 10.4.1, there's an information memo regarding the draft forestry bylaw recommendation uh, that was amended to provide clarity on the request to approve the bylaw. If I could have a mover and a seconder to approve the agenda as presented. Councillor Taylor, thank you, seconded by. Councillor Michelli, all those in favor? And that's carried. Any declarations of pecuniary interest today? Uh, seeing none, um, unfortunately for the public, we have two early closed session items uh, today that will be moving into closed session four. Um, I'm not sure, Teresa, do you probably an hour? Half an hour? About half an hour. So anticipating being back about uh, 1.40 p.m. for the continuation of the public meeting. Um, with that, if I could have a motion to enter into closed session at 1.08 p.m., to discuss items 4.1, the multi-year procurement contracts, which is a verbal update, and 4.2, an information memo uh, regarding the interest arbitration award between the Corporation of Norfolk County and the Ontario Public Service Employees Union. And that would be pursuant to sections 239.2 of the Municipal Act 2001, as amended as the subject matter pertains to labor relations uh, or employee negotiations and advice that is subject to solicitor client privilege, including communications necessary for that purpose. Mover and a seconder. Councilor. Just before you do that, sorry, there was a typo on the agenda. Second uh, close item is actually uh, the arbitration. On the 175 Canada for the term July 1st, 2020. Okay, perfect. Thanks, Teresa, for bringing that up. Mover and a seconder. Uh, Councilor Hoffman, seconded by Councilor Rabbits. All those in favor? That's carried.
Thanks, Teresa. All right, welcome back everyone. If I could have a motion to reconvene an open session at 1.33 p.m., Councillor Huffman, seconded by Councillor Rabbits. All those in favor, that's carried. Uh, mover and seconder to approve the first update as information. Councillor Taylor, seconded by Councillor Van Andrieshi. All those in favor, that's carried. Second motion reads as follows, uh, that the confidential information memo interest arbitration award between the Corporation of Norfolk County and the United Food and Commercial Workers Local 175 Canada for the term July 1st, 2020 to June 30th, 2023 be received as information and that a bylaw be passed authorizing the mayor and county clerk to sign the collective agreement on behalf of the Corporation of Norfolk County. Moved by Councillor Michelli, seconded by Councillor Taylor. All those in favour? That is carried. We don't have any deputations today, no consent items. Uh, three items of communication. Does any member wish to pull any of the items for further discussion? Okay, in that case, we've got 7.1 Downtown Simcoe Business Improvement Area Minutes, September 9th, 2022. 7.2 Long Point Region Conservation Authority Minutes, September 7th, 2022. And 7.3 Information Memo, copy of the Telecommunications Tower Notice. Mover and a seconder, please. Councillor Columbus, seconded by Councillor Rabbits. All those in favour? That is carried. Moving on to number eight, the approval of the minutes. We have the following regular minutes before us today. 8.1, the council minutes from October 5th, 2022, open and closed. Are there any errors or omissions? Seeing none, if I could have a mover and a seconder. Councillor Huffman, seconded by Councillor Vandendrishi. All those in favor? That's carried. Staff reports, uh, we've got 10.4.1. That is the long awaited forestry draft uh, conservation bylaw with the revisions from the October 5th, 2022 council meeting. And I will turn it over to you, Bill. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. I will be brief. Yeah, the, the memo in front of you uh, is a result of the October 5th meeting where staff went back and had uh, discussions with uh, a few more stakeholders. Out of those discussions, um, staff are, have made four changes, which are listed in the uh, memo to the bylaw as well. Um, it's clear that there are a number of, um, of uh, uh, details and things that there still is not a consensus on in, in the public and the, the stakeholders. So staff are, are recommending that we take um, a handful of these and, and put them more into um, operating procedures and things like that outside of the, the bylaw. We feel they fit better there. So with that, I'll turn it over to Mr. Biddle, who can uh, walk council through uh, briefly the four uh, main changes and touch base on some of the SOPs that are coming. Thank you. Thanks, Bill. And through the through the mayor to the rest of council, uh, just briefly on the four changes that were made uh, since the October 5th council meeting when the draft bylaw was presented, uh, number one was in relation to the harvest uh, permit application fees. The current bylaw does not contain a fee for a harvest permit application. Staff were recommending uh, the introduction of a fee to offset some of the administrative costs associated with processing uh, harvest permit applications. Uh, since our last council meeting in October 5th, we did have further consultation with, uh, with industry uh, stakeholders. It was decided uh, through those consultations that we would remove the fee. Uh, some of the concerns raised in, included uh, delaying uh, the process of harvest permit applications uh, and the concern that this fee would become uh, cumbersome and maybe deter people from uh, doing the right thing and applying for harvest permits. The forest bylaw has always been kind of used as a, an educational tool as well to, to promote best practices and certainly we don't want to deter people from applying for permits. Uh, so it was agreed through that meeting that we would remove uh, the proposed fees. Second thing was in relation to the time the county has to respond to a harvest permit application. The current bylaw allows for 45 days, but there is a schedule that allows for uh, an applicant to pay a fee to expedite the, the turnaround time. Uh, the draft bylaw was proposing to reduce from 45 days down to 20 days and remove the option to pay to have an application reviews be reviewed quicker, recognizing that these applications are already prioritized and there's not really an ability to pay a fee and have that turned around quicker. We already turn those around as quick as we possibly can. Uh, through our further consultations with stakeholders, that 20 days has now been reduced to 14 days in the draft forest bylaw. 
third item that was discussed in our further consultations uh, was in relation to the conditions and terms that are imposed to a harvest permit application. Primarily, there was concern from industry, as they've seen in other areas, that there would be the opportunity for a municipality to place a restriction on a harvest operation, uh, specifically restricting the time of year operations can take place. It has been done in other areas where uh, the municipality will impose uh, a timing restriction in respect of migratory birds. Uh, and that stems from a federal act, the Migratory Birds Convention Act. Uh, Norfolk County had no intent to do so, uh, but to, for further assurance to industry that we would not impose such conditions, we've included wording that specifies any terms and conditions will not restrict the time of year a harvest may take place. And that's been added to uh, the draft bylaw before you today. And the fourth provision was in relation to a salvage harvest. Uh, this is something that comes up frequently now with uh, the decline of ash trees and beech trees throughout the county. Uh, oftentimes a landowner wants to undertake the salvage of those trees. They don't necessarily meet the definition of being dead, uh, so they would be covered under the bylaw. Uh, oftentimes the stocking and, and residual trees left over after a, such a salvage harvest would not conform with the bylaw. So in the draft bylaw before you today, we have added in a provision for salvage harvest, similar to the way it's presented in the, the current bylaw. Uh, the initial intent was to uh, address those through an exemption permit, uh, which would have been feasible and had a similar outcome. Uh, but for reassurance, we've had a, added a provision in here specific to salvage harvest. Uh, as Bill alluded to, there were a number of issues brought up uh, throughout the process, primarily relating to, you know, procedures of bylaw officers, when a bylaw officer may enter a property, uh, how our investigations are carried out. Uh, there's a lot of questions regarding uh, normal farm practices. And again, we're, we're a little limited, especially, especially on the normal farm practices side. That is a definition coming from uh, another provincial act, the Farming Food Production Protection Act. Uh, so, I mean, there's only so many of those things that we can address in the bylaw. We do have policies and procedures relating to bylaw officers and uh, how we carry out an investigation, but it doesn't currently go into the such detail as when the landowners contacted or any of those steps that were brought up as a concern. So some of these we feel we can just, you know, update our current policies and maybe make it more clear. Uh, and we can do that with consultation with stakeholders. Uh, but ultimately, that is more of an internal policy, not something that would be dictated in the bylaw specifically, but more of an internal policy and procedure. And then specific to normal farm practices, other areas have gone to such length as developing a, an accompanying document for their bylaw uh, relating to how normal farm practices can be handled through the, through the municipality rather than relying solely on the OMAFRA normal farm practices hearing board, uh, which is the, the avenue that you're forced to take if there's a discrepancy or a conflict between a municipal bylaw and a farming operation. There's a complaint process to go through for OMAFRA. Some municipalities have uh, found it advantageous to develop their own internal policy, uh, recognizing that the OMAFRA policy or the OMAFRA process can take up to a year before you're even seen by the by the normal farm practices board. So although it's not spelled out in OMAFRA legislation, uh, that there are other municipalities that have taken that route to kind of head off any normal farm practices issues at the municipal level before it goes on to a provincial board. With that, I'll turn it over to Council if you have any questions about those proposed changes or the draft bylaws that's presented today. Questions from Council. Council Van Der Ishi, go ahead. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, and through you. Um, uh, my only concern, and I mean, it's it's time we get the bylaw, uh, but at the end of the day, when I, I've read a few others, uh, I find that the, the fine or penalty section um, the ones that I read were approximately half of what we have. So if we say 50,000, they say 25, we say 100, they say 50. Is there any consideration? And I did ask you this question prior. So this is the max of what can happen so that you, it could be considered to be, could be substantially less than this if, if an offense took place. If you could explain that. Through the mayor to the rest of council, yes. Yeah. So the penalties uh, specified in the penalty section of the bylaw do stipulate a maximum fine. So the fines can be anywhere less than that up to that amount. Uh, the difficult thing with force bylaws, you know, there are minor offenses whereby obviously that maximum penalty is not usually justified, but there are instances where that max penalty is 
barely uh, barely sufficient in the case of large scale clear cutting and stuff. So ultimately, when we're uh, seeking a fine, that goes through the justice of peace, and the justice of peace ultimately has final discretion when what fine is applied. So if the justice of the peace feels that's what the county is seeking is not uh, uh, realistic or it's too too high, then they can adjust that. Yeah. That's Martin, go ahead. Let's go for it. Um, through the mayor to uh, Mr. Biddle, I'm just wondering if you can elaborate on the additional consultation that occurred and and who participated in that. Through the mayor to the rest of council. So at the, I believe it was the October 5th meeting, we did have a couple deputations come in, one by uh, Mr. Penner from Townsend Lumber, uh, who does represent a large portion of uh, forest industry within Norfolk County, and also a, a private resident who, uh, who had uh, been pretty vocal throughout the whole consultation process. So uh, that further consultation was just with those two parties. And uh, the result, the resulting changes from those uh, discussions we felt were minor enough and did not impact the overall uh, intent of the bylaw. It was more relating to uh, county processes that didn't really impact overall the, how the bylaw is applied. So uh, we felt that that was minor enough that we could proceed without further consultation. Had there been any larger changes or, or changes that would affect the actual uh, body of the bylaw a little bit more, we would have been a little more concerned and, and would have extended that further. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, Adam, at, at the beginning of your remarks, um, you also mentioned, and I think Mr. Cridland did too, that um, it seems to me that one of the items of concern by some residents is that um, they are concerned about some of the policies and procedures about how bylaw enforcement officers conduct themselves, uh, how they um, process uh, complaints and that kind of thing. So uh, you said that what we're going to do is make some of those changes to policies and procedures internally and that we will then uh, just so I can make this correct for anybody who's watching. We will be including some of those stakeholders in those policy and procedure changes. Is that correct? Through the mayor to council, I can't guarantee we would involve stakeholders with developing some of our internal policies and procedures, but we can definitely make them available so that people can be aware of them. Okay, very, very good. And the, and the reason I'm asking that question is I, I, I just want to make sure that uh, that there is that we provide some transparency to the public about how we go about doing these items. And uh, and I'm hoping also in, in the event that uh, some of these changes uh, are relevant to uh, particular perhaps parts of Norfolk County that the ward councillors also be updated about changes we're making there. Noted and uh, and again that's specific to like policies that relate to staff and how they conduct business would probably be more of an internal thing. Should we open up uh, anything like the normal farm practices discussion and developing processes like that that would be uh, involved some consultation with some of our egg, egg sector groups. Very good Adam thank you very much. Thank you Madam Mayor. Thanks, Councilor Michelli. Uh, only question that I have, Adam, I think they're all really great changes. Um, of course, it's in the email from uh, Hetty and Keys today in terms of um, not adopting the 30 days. Is there, to me, you know, 10 business days is not really a lot of time. Somebody could be out of the country. They may even want legal consultation. You know, when we were looking at having a much longer time frame, even for the county to approve these applications, I just don't see the big deal to say that you've got 30 days to file an appeal as opposed to 15. Is that really? Through the mayor. So the the appeal for the stop work order, I think, is what you're referring to the 14 days. So uh, I mean, the the ability to appeal stop work order already is a little bit. I, I don't know if it's completely unusual, but it is a little bit unusual in the sense that if there's a stop work order applied to a property, there is reasonable and probable grounds that an offense has occurred. Uh, by providing an ability to appeal that, uh, and this has already happened now, where it's given the landowner a false sense that if they're successful in that appeal, there are no charges or that they're completely allevi alleviated and what they're doing was okay. 
So that, that was always my initial concern with, with having an appeal process in there. Uh, the 14 days that's stipulated in the bylaw now, uh, I believe it states that uh, an appeal can only be made if there's at least 14 days remaining on a stop work order. So there may be instances where a uh, stop work order is set to expire within 14 days. And the reason we've we've made that, if it's within 14 days, you can't appeal that, is because if, in essence, if the stop work order is expired or it's already been lifted, there is nothing to appeal. Uh, there seems to be a false sense that if if that landowner could appeal, it may impact their resulting potential charges or that they may alleviate them from any wrongdoing and that's not necessarily the case so that that appeal process is specific just to the stop work order and the 14 days is just a uh, uh, recognizing that if we may not be even be able to schedule a bylaw appeals committee in less time than that so that 14 days is really the threshold for us to set an appeals meeting and have an ability the ability for the appeals body to actually hear that appeal if it expires before then, then there's nothing to appeal and there's no, there's no hearing that could be had. I'm half sold on that and half not, but I see where you're coming from. Um, any other questions from council? Somebody wish to move the staff recommendation then. Councilor Taylor, thank you. And seconded by Councilor Michelli. All those in favor? And that's carried. Thanks very much for your work on this. I know it's been a long haul. Yes, thank you and the rest of council as well. Thank you. <laughs> and our final staff report, Teresa, 10.6.1, uh, the Committee of Adjustment Member Appointment Extension. That's CAO 22-133. Thank you through the mayor. Um, <clears throat> the report is before council. Um, I think it's pretty uh, standard. Uh, we took a report in June to um, extend all of our advisory committees to the end of the year because we knew it was a changeover of term of council. We wanted to bring a report back with respect to uh, establishing advisory committees for the next term. Um, one of the committees that we didn't uh, make specific recommendations on was the committee of adjustment, which the term of membership also expires at the end of November recognizing that the CFA is a statutory requirement under the Planning Act and we need to continue on with those meetings. Um, we do need an extension of the members so that we can uh, commence with the recruitment period, which will start sometime in November. So we're just simply asking for the current membership to be extended till the end of January so that we can complete the recruitment uh, process properly. Thank you. Thank you, a mover and a seconder. Councillor Huffman, seconded by Councillor Vanden Rishi. All those in favor? That's carried. Uh, finally, moving on to our last proper item on the agenda, uh, our bylaws. Um, we just have bylaw 2022-98. Uh, is there any councillor that wishes to speak to that bylaw? In that case, if I could have a mover and a seconder. Councillor Taylor, second by Councillor Vanden Rishi. All those in favour? That's carried. No motions, no notices of motion, unless there's a councillor that wishes to introduce a notice of motion. All right, seeing none, we'll move on to the general announcements. Uh, I know usually I turn the floor over to you guys first. I'm going to start today and then Al's going to follow. And if anybody else wants to chime in after that, uh, the floor will be yours. Um, but I guess I just wanted to address council. Uh, it's been quite the ride the last four years. Um, it's been an adventure that uh, I'm sure none of us could have ever imagined. There were good times, uh, there were difficult times, and there were memories both uh, good and bad and ones that I'm sure we'll never forget, uh, but mostly the experience for each of us was an important one and it was an important one for Norfolk County. No one likes a long speech, especially from a politician and let alone one that was defeated, so uh, I'll keep it short, uh, but the strides that this council and staff have made, I think were so monumentous uh, that they deserve to be uh, commended. When we started, this place was nothing short of a financial mess. Uh, we didn't have no reserves. We had negative reserves, and I'm just still not even sure that that's actually a thing. Um, but the trajectory that we were on was clearly unsustainable. Uh, we changed some staff members, some people at the top, and from there, staff under new leadership brought us all council uh, a plan, and council executed on that plan. No one around this table liked cutting services. No one around this table liked cutting facilities. Uh, no one around this table liked raising taxes uh, to fix years of creative, creative accounting. Um, decisions like that aren't only horribly politically unpopular decisions, uh, but they are hard for a community 
that we all live in and that we are all a part of. Uh, but make no mistake, the decisions had to be made. Um, and the fact that we accomplished even that in one term of council, I think is uh, is incredible all on its own. But the list of our accomplishments didn't stop there. Of course, after we were told that there were no problems with the water, um, we all knew that that wasn't true. Uh, there is now a plan and that is a plan that you all have all put into place. Port Dover has already had some upgrades. There are other upgrades that are currently in progress and hopefully will be finished uh, within the coming year. Um, you know, when that is completed, development will be back on track and everyone at this council table should know that they all contributed uh, to making that happen. The line from Simcoe to Townsend is moving through the stages of regulatory hurdles. And once those two projects are complete within the near term, there will be water security that will allow growth uh, for the coming years. Um, but the work can't stop there. Otherwise, in seven to 10 years, we're going to be the next council uh, is going to be back to this very spot that we had to endure the last four years, shutting down development because there was no plan for the future. It's the work of planning for the years into the future that is really just as important as the day to day work uh, that we accomplish at the county. And before COVID hit, there were other things too uh, that we accomplished. The Causeway Bridge went through years of emergency repairs, wasted spending because of trying to kick a problem down the road. It's been a long four years for staff, I know, battling regulatory hurdles and asking for permits that in one case we were told such a permit had never even been issued. Uh, the Meisner Dam was done after years of debate, and now finally the bridge on 45 is moving forward. Given the cost escalations that we've seen over the past four years, I'm sure the savings on that bridge uh, are not what we anticipated in the beginning. Um, however, uh, as we look to $800 million in capital investments over the next 10 years, looking for those creative solutions, I think is going to be uh, essential. But there's others too. There was the forestry gas uh, well that has been a, a source of debate and issue in this county for years and that is finally being dealt with and paid for by the province. Even our wastewater management contract was never issued in RF, uh, put out to an RFP in Norfolk County uh, in the past, in, in all of Norfolk's history. Um, and so that in and of itself was an accomplishment. The Phragmites at Turkey Point Beach, you couldn't even see the beach before this council had started. Uh, the changes to our procurement policies and the fact that staff are getting conflict of interest training in procurement matters so that everyone, even in a small community, is on an even playing field. We actually have a capital asset management plan now. We brought in policies around reserve levels and debt levels to prevent us from heading back to where we were in 2018 when we started. We modernized customer service. Imagine credit card payments and applying for permits in, online in the year 2022. We started on a path of much needed facility consolidation, uh, but there is still much more work to be done in that regard. We started putting a lot of our community buildings back into the hands of the community that built them so that they can be run far more cost effectively than the county ever could. We even made the first investments into our paramedic program in over 10 years. And probably one of the best things for downtown Simcoe moving forward is OPP's extended service office in downtown Simcoe at the Inwell facility. And as of today, I guess we can also add a forestry uh, bylaw that was also many years in the making. And two of my favorites, uh, the fact that the entire Inwell contribution is being funded by upper levels of government uh, and the fact that we are getting high speed internet to the year to by the end of next year, I should say to the door of every farm business and home that is unserviced in Norfolk County. Those are some pretty big accomplishments over the term of council. No one around this table showed up uh, to council or takes a job in public service to prove anything. We all showed up to improve things and improve over the last four years we did. Even while our staff worked through one of the toughest times in our history, they got us back on track financially. We have a plan for our infrastructure, although finding money in the years ahead uh, to accomplish those goals is still going to be a challenge. But most importantly, great strides were made in developing great teams of great people that will lead the organization in the years to come. 
What I know is that because of everyone here, council and staff, Norfolk County is in a much different place today than it was four years ago. And for that, I am immensely proud. So to staff, thank you for everything you have done over the past four years. It has been an honor and a privilege to have worked with you. Uh, and now I guess as a taxpayer, please keep doing what you're doing and don't ever stop bringing the bad news uh, forward to council. Uh, keep moving forward the way that you have been over the past four years. Thank you to council for your four years of dedicated service uh, to your community and for leaving Norfolk in a better place than it was uh, when you found it. And a special thank you uh, to Councillor Van Passen, who sadly uh, is not here right now, um, but for really stepping up to the role as, as deputy mayor. As somebody that was off uh, flying, he was uh, always a great uh, source for me to rely on. And thank you to the community for the outpouring of support uh, over the last four years and certainly over the past week. Uh, I literally knew no one when I arrived in Norfolk County and the people I've met along the way are really, uh, they are the best part of the entire experience uh, that I've had. Well, most of the people anyway, there's a few that I could probably do without. And with that, uh, good luck to the new council and to Mayor-elect Martin. Uh, it's a tough job, but it's an important one. So thanks very much. And with that, Al, I will turn it over to you. I don't know how I follow that, but um, I just wanted to say on behalf of all staff uh, here at Norfolk County, uh, a special thank you to all of you for uh, the last four years. Public life is something that's not easy. Uh, it's something that, you know, clearly over the last few years, you've differed on some things, you've agreed on a lot of things, but one thing that's indisputable is your heart's always been in the right place. You've always taken these roles to do what's better for your community, to bring your community forward, for your neighbours, for your friends, and uh, Norfolk County will always owe you a debt of gratitude for your commitment to this service. Um, you know, I'm reminded lots of times when I'm talking to my neighbours and, and some of my folks around Norfolk County and, and they talk to me about yourselves and you know is it really you know is it a difficult thing is it and it, there's just a lack of appreciation in terms of what you as elected officials have to go through day in and day out it's not a job where you come in every every second Tuesday for a couple of hours and read some reports and pass some some direction to staff you are working 24 hours a day seven days a week you sacrifice some personal time and times with your family and friends to do the jobs that you're doing and for that Norfolk County will always be grateful and, and in your debt for that so thank you very much for your committed service over the last four years for those of you who are uh, leaving uh, after four years I can only say that uh, when I look at the three of you you're all so young and got a whole life ahead of you yet um, I would certainly hold your head up high and be proud of the accomplishments that you've done over the last four years I think uh, there's no doubt in my mind that some of the lessons that you've learned over the last four years will allow you to achieve anything that you want in your future endeavors. And for that, uh, we wish you all the very best and a, a very special thank you for years of service. So thank you very much. Thanks, Al. Any closing comments from any councillors or we're good to move on? Oh, Council Martin, go ahead. Well, I don't want to be the only one, but thank you, Mayor Chop. I'd, I'd like to thank the constituents of Ward 6, Port Dover and Woodhouse for an amazing opportunity. Uh, very unique and not a lot of people who live here in Norfolk County get to experience uh, what this is like. So I, I thank them very much for the opportunity to sit in this chair and represent them over the last four years. Councilor Columbus, go ahead. Well, over the course of the last 37 years, <laughs> I can honestly say that this past term of council has been the most challenging. Okay, we went through a COVID pandemic and also significant change in senior staff and other staff in general, and that has made it challenging. And I just want to thank all the uh, members of council for their dedication and hard work in making those accomplishments that the mayor mentioned happen over the last four years. Thank you. Looks like we'll go around and um, I'd be remiss if I didn't also uh, extend my gratitude, my thank yous to staff, uh, our leadership, my colleagues on council and her worship. Um, coming into this role um, new 
Uh, we had seven of nine seats change, and we were a very new council. Um, and I think it was a really rewarding experience to hit the ground running with a team that was very fresh in their ways of thinking, um, hopeful uh, in the accomplishments that they could achieve over one term. And I think we accomplished quite a bit uh, in, the, in the four years. It's gone by very quickly here, but I want to thank the community for their support, um, the various committees and organizations. We have a lot of passionate and intelligent volunteers that serve on our various boards and committees. And I really treasure and value the relationships that I've built uh, with my colleagues serving on those various different boards and committees. I'm hopeful for the future and want to uh, put campaigning behind me at this point in time and gracefully exit politics. I think it's time for our community to truly come together and uh, support uh, the newly elected council on November 15th. So thank you again to all the staff uh, that have been very supportive and uh, fulfilling mentorship roles with me and uh, getting me up to speed on various different areas. Uh, I'll always treasure my moments and uh, my wins and uh, my losses you know, on Norfolk County Council. It takes a village and uh, we really did come together this last term uh, to try to move our community forward. And I think the future is uh, an optimistic one and I'm looking forward to next four years and know that you'll have uh, Ian Rabbits uh, in, in your corner supporting you from the sidelines. Thank you. Well, thank you. Um, first of all, I haven't been here as long as the rest of you, so but I, I do appreciate the time I've had uh, to work with each and every one of you. Um, you're a great bunch and I'm pleased to say that uh, I have to thank you for your service. It's amazing. Um, we have a better place here with you in it, uh, so we've learned something from each and every one of you. But I'd like to thank the uh, Ward 2 for putting me back in this seat so I can do a full term, and I do appreciate that. But uh, for all those that are leaving, I commend you for the job well done. Thank you. Councilman Rishi. I certainly uh, would just like to thank everyone sitting around the table for the last four years. We've worked very well together, I'd say, and it's uh, certainly learned a lot. Uh, I'd like to thank every member of staff that you know, certainly has helped us through these four years and everyone in Norfolk County and specifically Simcoe for letting me sit here for the last four years and everyone returning and Alan, you're sitting over there. I know you guys are going to do a great job for the next four years. So like Rabbit said, uh, I'm in your corner. <laughs> Mr. Rabbit, Mr. Rabbit. Uh, I'd like to echo everyone's sentiments. Um, first off, I'd like to thank the constituents of Ward 7 for allowing me the opportunity and honor to represent them over the past four years and the next four years. Um, these past four years have been the wildest four years of my life and, and in such a good way. Uh, it's it's um, you know, run for council, help your community. <laughs> There's just so much more to it than that. And the things that I've learned, the people I've met have have had a big impact on my life. I'd like to thank first and foremost everyone here around the table for everything that you've brought to my life and to my professional growth. I'd like to thank staff for everything that you have done over the last four years. You guys must cringe when you bring on a whole new council that's uh, everybody's green. So um, certainly, um, we, as, as Mayor Chop mentioned, we had some trials, we had some tribulations, but I think we had a lot of successes. And sometimes it's really hard to see the forest for the trees and it's nice to recap at these moments and just find out really how far we came. And so um, for those that won't be around this table anymore, your presence will be missed. Um, it's uh, everybody's a, an important part of, of this, um, this group and um, we will make room for the new faces that will be coming and continually to uh, try to work as a team and do and put our best foot forward for Norfolk. So thank you very much to everybody. Thank you, Mayor Chop. Um, yes, I, I also want to uh, concur with all of the uh, things that have been said so far and to thank the constituents of Ward 1, uh, obviously, for giving me this opportunity to represent them again. Um, I, I do think that, uh, you know, one day, um, perhaps sometime in the future, uh, I don't know how long, but people will look back at the achievements of this council and they will be able to say, that is the time that things turned around. 
and uh, so I, I just want to convey to to all members of council, uh, particularly those who are who are leaving us, that you have been uh, an instrumental part of some of the most exciting, thrilling, uh, perhaps stressful times of my life, and uh, I don't think I would want to do it with anybody other than you. So thank you very much. Thanks, Councillor Michelli. And with that, uh, Councillor Huffman, I hope you keep the tradition going the next term of council. If I could have a motion to approve bylaw 2022-109 being a bylaw to confirm the proceedings of the Council of Norfolk County at this regular council meeting held on the first day of November 2022. Moved by Councillor Huffman, seconded by Councillor Rabbits. All those in favour? That is carried. And finally, a motion to adjourn uh, moved by Councillor Huffman at 2.09 p.m., seconded by Councillor Taylor. All those in favour? And that is carried. Council is adjourned. Um, even after all of that, uh, we are still back here at 3 p.m. for one last quick public hearing. So we'll see you back at 3 o'clock.
Hey, thanks, Teresa. Welcome everyone uh, to the last meeting after the last meeting. <laughs> I, I'm not sure that I can speak much. Can you hear me now? Okay, oh, it's good. You're good. Okay. So uh, we have a guest that has asked us to, to slow things down a little bit uh, today, so we'll do our best. Uh, and with that, I would like to call the public hearing committee meeting to order. If I could have a mover and a seconder to approve the agenda, Councillor Van and Rishi is moving that, seconded by Councillor Michelli. All those in favor? That is carried. Any declarations of pecuniary interest? Seeing none, I now officially open the public meetings held under the Municipal Act, the Planning Act, and County Policy. Please be advised that in order to preserve your right to appeal to the Ontario Land Tribunal, you are required to make comments or provide written submissions prior to the passage of a bylaw. It is important to note that no final decisions are being made here today. These meetings are simply to allow the public to provide initial comments and further reports will come forward at a future date. We have one item on the agenda today that's OPNPL 2022254 and ZNPL 2022255. That's an application to amend Norfolk County's official plan and zoning bylaw of Norfolk County on the subject lands to facilitate the replacement of an existing dwelling located in the hazard land zone. And that's in relation to staff report CD 22-095. And with that, I will turn it over to Trisha Givens, our director of planning. Uh, thank you, Mayor Chop. I'm just going to ask Fabian, he's going to present uh, this proposal for committee and then we will be able to answer any questions. Thanks, Fabian. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon and through the chair. So I have prepared the following information report in front of you. Um, I just want to confirm before I get started. Can everyone see the screen? Yeah, we're good, baby. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so the applications uh, were submitted by Civic Planning Solutions on behalf of the property owner, Sasha. Uh, the per so the official the purpose of the official plan amendment and zoning bylaw amendment is essentially to replace the existing dwelling and construct a new dwelling on the subject lands on a larger footprint. So the purpose behind the official plan amendment would be to add a site specific policy to allow for the construction of a single detached dwelling on a larger footprint. And the purpose of the zoning bylaw amendment is to add a site specific zoning provision to establish the minimum front yard, interior side yard, rear yard, and building height provisions for the subject lands. The surrounding land uses consist of primarily residential properties to the north, and consists of uh, residential properties to the east and west as well, and to the south is Lake Erie. Uh, so here you can see the official plan mapping and the current zoning bylaw amendment mapping for the property. So the subject lands are zoned and designated hazard lands in the Norfolk County Official Plan and Zoning Bylaw. Uh, so because the applicant is proposing to construct a larger cottage than what current or sorry, larger building than what currently exists, uh, the property owner is required to apply for an official plan amendment and a zoning bylaw amendment to facilitate the project. Um, so because the proposed development, because it's owned and designated hazard lands, essentially development is not permitted in the hazard land zone. Um, so the property owner requires the official plan amendment to allow for the construction on the larger footprint and the zoning bylaw amendment to establish the zone provisions. Uh, regards to technical reports that have been submitted by the applicants as part of their application, they've submitted a plan justification report, a grading plan, a slope stability assessment, as well as a site survey and an LPRCA permit. Uh, consultation comments from staff are still pending and I do note in error uh, there have been public comments that have been received and I believe there are a, a there is a member of the public uh, as well to speak to the application as well as the agent and the property owner um, who are also available to answer any questions that anybody may have. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm also available to answer any questions that anybody may have and I'm happy to do so. Thank you for your time. 
Thanks, Fabian, very much. Um, it's okay with council. Maybe we'll hold questions and take the applicant first. Uh, so does David, you're going to speak on behalf of the applicant. Good to know you come back out of retirement for some files. Well, yeah, I, I'm trying to retire. <laughs> I have a few Norfolk applications uh, still left to, uh, to uh, complete. Uh, Dave Verrill, uh, agent for the applicant. Uh, what we're proposing is, is replacement of an existing uh, dwelling uh, within the urban area of Port Dover uh, with a new dwelling. Uh, the site itself is uh, designated uh, as a plan in, in your official plan. Uh, it's not unlike a some application I did a year or so ago uh, yeah, uh, elsewhere in, in Port Dover. Uh, what we did as a matter of, of uh, course, we uh, did the necessary engineering uh, studies in terms of slope stability. Uh, hydraulic studies, those type of things, and uh, we submitted our application uh, for a permit to the uh, Long Point Region Conservation Authority. Uh, much discussion was had uh, in terms of the detailed engineering, uh, the building plans, and, the like. and uh, after working through that process, I think a year plus, uh, we were. Uh, able to be given a, uh, a permit from Long to uh, replace the existing uh, former cottage uh, with a new dwelling uh, based on the uh, engineering drawings, but also on the building plans. Uh, we submitted a complete set of building plans to Long Point and they, they have uh, approved them and they are, uh, we do have our permit from them. So uh, once we get planning approval, we'll be able to get our full building permit from um, In terms of the justification, the reason I, I opted to go for a official plan on that uh, is that uh, the, the proposed uh, building will have an attached uh, garage or carport garage actually. And uh, that would increase the, the footprint, uh, uh, making it a bit larger. And uh, I wish to make sure that, that we ticked off all the boxes in terms of the official plan policy uh, in order to uh, get the zoning and then before council. Uh, the building itself uh, will be two stories. Yes. OK, yeah, this, okay. the speaker uh, is breaking up just as FYI. OK, I will. Oh my God. Fantastic. Uh, uh, so uh, basically uh, it will be a two story uh, dwelling with a walkout uh, basement uh, and it backs on to uh, looks over the lake. The actual uh, top of the bank was uh, not clearly defined uh, on the ground, although we did uh, come to an agreement with uh, Long Point uh, Conservation Authority to <clears throat> establish the, the, uh, the top of the bank for the purposes of uh, locating the, the proposed dwelling. Uh, the proposed uh, side yards uh, meet the, uh, uh, which would be the R1 zoning uh, for uh, required interior side yards. Um, obviously, the rear yard is no issue. It's quite extensive. Uh, the front yard setback uh, is slightly closer than the existing cottage. Uh, uh, Although the uh, front porch is, is uh, has a, uh, a canopy over it, but it, it uh, will be an open porch. Uh, the other uh, houses uh, located adjacent to this particular property uh, uh, appear to have uh, more minimal uh, front yard setbacks. Uh, and, uh, 
just looking, and in fact, I wouldn't be surprised if some of them are actually uh, uh, encroaching on the right of way. The street itself that it fronts on, uh, Columbus, is uh, just a little small stub street. Uh, certainly doesn't receive a lot of traffic, uh, so we're not uh, uh, concerned relative to impact on, on uh, traffic or uh, other properties. Um, the uh, property itself will have a park, have one parking space in front of the garage, and the second parking space will be within the garage, and we therefore uh, meet the bylaw requirements. So typically, we're meeting the by bylaw requirements for the R1 residential zone, but because this is designated as hazard land, uh, what we're staff are proposing will be a site specific amendment setting out the uh, zone provisions. Uh, that's basically it. If there's any questions, I'd be pleased to answer. And uh, my client is, is here as well. So between uh, the two of us, I'm sure we can answer questions. Thanks. I'll just ask Irene, did you want to provide any comments at this time? Oh, you're just on mute though. Sorry, I see that now. Um, sure, I can provide some comments or ask some questions. I would like to have it again. My audio was very choppy, so I did, you know, I'm not sure if um, it's due to the speaker, the position of the microphone, um, but it was not the best audio. I've participated in the last two year, two and a half years of Teams meetings. Um, so, but again, I just wanted to stipulate that the audio wasn't the best. Um, so my questions again, I'm looking at the site plan that was provided and I just right. have this isn't really a time for questions. It's just that if oh, you sorry. want to provide some comments as the uh, as the client, as the owner of the property, uh, then you're you have five minutes that you're able to make that presentation to council at this time. So that's not for questions. No, none of this today, unfortunately, is is for questions. It's for an opportunity for uh, the property owners and uh, members of the public that have concerns to raise those. Um, and okay, so I guess my so I guess okay. I won't I won't form in the I won't form them as questions. But then the concerns are for um, water overflow. I as a cottage owner. Um, already have major concerns about the slope of Kiwanis Avenue and the new flow of it, how it moves water down to my property. So with these new elevation changes on the property adjacent to mine, I'm wondering how the town or how the property owner is going to control that overflow of water and how that will be addressed. I mean, I, I'm sorry, I just, the way that I read this from staff, uh, this is my mistake here. I, I assumed you were the owner of the property, but you're not. No, I am the owner of uh, 18 Kiwanis. Got it, okay, so I'm gonna hold you, I'm gonna come back to you. Does the okay. owner of the property wish to speak in addition to yourself, David, or you're good, okay. Are there questions from Council of Mr. Rowe? We can always come back to him at the end as well, or questions for staff. Councillor Huffman, go ahead. Thank you, Mayor Chop. Through you to Mr. Rowe. I guess my question is, um, I ran into a situation similar to this in, in my ward um, about two years ago and was informed that a property that would had become derelict was on hazard lands deemed through the LPRCA and that no building could take place. They could renovate the building, like work on it, but they couldn't change the footprint of it. So I'm just wondering why, why if they're, if it's deemed hazard land and the rules are one for one person, why would they allow um, a permit on this land? Okay, uh, the, the simple answer is uh, there are, uh, different categories of hazard land. Uh, if you're within a flood prone area, uh, there's uh, rules relating to uh, replacing dwellings or repairing dwellings. In this case, uh, it's uh, considered to be other hazard, which would be more related to the slope of the land. 
and and possible concerns relative to stability of the of the bank. So, if you're in a, a flood prone area, uh, the conservation authority is reluctant to issue permits. If you're within the other uh, hazard land category, and there's a separate set of policies within your official plan, uh, as well as within the provincial policy statement dealing with with other hazards, and other hazard lands. Okay, you're welcome. That's Columbus. Thank you, uh, Mr. O. You mentioned stability of the bank is the issue here, and can you tell me did, was there a coastal engineer involved? in locating the uh, the building that's going on this property? Yes, we, we hired Soilmat, an engineering firm out of out of uh, uh, Hamilton, and they did the soil studies and uh, determined that the, uh, the slope uh, was stable in the area that we're proposing to build. Thank, thank you. Further questions from Council? You'll get your opportunity when we go around. You have to come up to the podium. Unfortunately, there's a bit of a process that we have to follow, so you'll get. We'll have David take a seat, and then anybody that wishes to speak will have their opportunity to come up and and speak to it. Uh, it's not really a time for question and answers, but if anybody has particular questions, you can always kind of throw them out there and we will do our best to have a counselor hopefully pose that question to staff uh, in that question period afterwards. Thank you, Mr. Rowe. So with that, then I will open up the floor. Irene, since I had you on before, I will start with you. You have five minutes to make your deputation uh, to council. And if you could please everyone provide your address uh, for the record as well. Sure, my name is Irene Schiller. Address is 18 Kiwanis, Port Dover. Um, so just a few of the concerns and or questions that I had. Um, the material first off was very small to read. So again, with somebody with eye issues and accessibility, it was a little difficult. Once I got files that I can manipulate and make bigger, it was a little better but then it just led to more questions. So again, I have concerns about the elevation um, and they seem to be a little unclear. Um, the new proposed front of the house, like again, um, I'm just concerned about the elevation change from the garage to the front porch of the house. On this, um, It appears that it's two levels. Um, the side, west side, that's going to be facing me is now three levels. And I too am concerned about the stability of the bank. So I'm wondering if we could get a, a report, a copy of the report. Um, because I have concerns about the stability of the bank. I've also got some concerns of what I saw on the, sorry, I'm just trying to bring it up. The actual site plan about the concrete slabs and blocks that are gonna be built into the bank. I have concerns about how trucks are going to get there without affecting my property. I have major concerns again about the water runoff um, from the change in elevation both to my side and on the other side of the property going on to um, the neighbor on the other side. Um, as I said, I have concerns about already how Kiwanis has been changed. So now it has a big slope. There used to be an old tree um in the front uh left side of that property um and when that tree fell a lot of water gets absorbed and already flows down into my property um, which has caused significant sinkage of my property as well um so again i'm looking to get clarification on how the proposed water is going to be dealt with um i have a question about it says no fill is to be placed on the slope as per the soil mat engineering consultant slope study. So my question is, what does actually does that mean? I, I looking at it, if it's a three story going out and if he's digging deep into the um, bank, where's that fill going to go if he can't put it on the bank according or if am I reading that correctly? Um, I wondered again if there was going to be with the elevation. Um, what type of 
concrete blocks would then be on the front of the property? Um, are they not needed in the front like they are in the back because of the elevation difference? Um, and like I say, I did have some just overall general confusion because the numbers were so small, but the elevation wasn't very clear. Um, and I just wanted further clarification on that, or if we could get some information. Um, and again, I would, as I said, I, I'd like to see the integrity of the bank study that was done, um, if that's possible. Okay, so I'm sure some members of council have taken some notes on your question here. And um, with that, I'm going to move on to everyone else that's here present. So again, each person has five minutes. Um, if we can try to avoid repetition of the same uh, materials and stick to new items, uh, you're welcome to come up to the podium and you have five minutes. Uh, sir, unfortunately, it's just the process of, you know, government bureaucracy. My clerk is going to give me the gears if I because you can't talk there. If you'd like to come up to the podium, the floor is yours. Firstly, what is the general? firstly? Can you state your name, please, and your address for the record? This is just how the hearings go. Just your name and your address for the record. Seven Northwest. Perfect. Okay. Uh, the gentleman made reference to front and back of the property. What is he referring to as the front and the back? On the old British way place for survey. The lake in front can sit and what faces and a little confused. What Mr. Rowan uh, is referring to the front and the back, it makes a big difference. And it will make a difference do I read? Well, if I get might understand the whole process a little better. This is not how the process works. However, just in the interest of expediting this along in our last of last meetings, Mr. Rowe, if you could just make that one small clarification and then we're going to come back and you will have your five minutes and then we have to move on in the proper process. Okay. Uh, by my definition, the front, the frontage and the front is on Kiwanis uh, uh, street and the rear yard or the rear uh, lot line would be uh, on the lake side. Well, uh, when I as I look at the at the sketch, uh, the front door of the proposed dwelling will be on Kiwanis or uh, Kiwanis and the back door will be facing towards the lake. Thanks, Mr. Rowe, for making a clarification. Okay, so you do have a couple more minutes if you'd like to make some. <laughs> okay. The problem is I'm not trying to be difficult, sir. The, the reason is the meetings are recorded. So when you're speaking right now and you don't have a microphone on, what you're saying, unfortunately, the public that's out there watching, nobody can hear anything and it won't be recorded as part of public record because the room isn't picking it up. You think you can't hear me? You can hear me if I'm out in center field, I'll guarantee you. I got a voice like you wouldn't believe. Well, I do too. So let's move on. Next person that would like to speak, you've got five minutes at the podium. Please state your name and address for the record. So 
on this one. <laughs> okay, my name is Shirley Ammerman. I live at 14 Kiwanis, which is the east side of Thatchen and Erica's proposed building. Um, I have already sent two emails to Fabian, and uh, last one as of yesterday, I guess. Um, I don't know if the rest of council has already received these notes or if I have to talk about all this again. Um, but if not, so everybody's aware, I have written notes here. So the first one was um, with this changing amendment, you were saying that you were changing from hazard zone to hazard zone with special policy with a special policy area. Then it goes on and it says minimum of front yard 2.5 meters, minimum of interior side yard 1.2 meters, minimum rear yard 1.82, minimum building height that was left open. I need to know this height because when I look at this, all the plans that I have read, from the top of the roof to the ground level at my level right now, is 41 feet. That's very high. And I'd like to know what your minimum is. Um, the problem is going to happen at my house with the exhausting, because the house is so close and it's four feet from the property line, and I'm not very far, I'm probably seven feet from the property line to my actual house. Because of my furnace and all the venting, it's coming out at that side of the house. When you have a big house that high, all the winds are going to come down and there's going to be a problem with the exhausting of the wind turbine turbulence coming off his roof. And I'm really concerned about that. And the, um, the other problem with wind is when he's that high and he's closer to Kiwanis than I am, I'm that closer to the lake. You get southwesterly winds, say 60 kilometer knots. That wind's going to come across. It's going to hit his big house. Then it's going to turn and come right back, right against the corner of my house. That's going to be, it's going to cause a lot of damage. Then it's going to turn and it's going to be like a wind turn tunnel all the way back to Kiwanis. So again, I'm very concerned with the height of this property. Um, the other part is um, on the east side of his property. He only has four feet, 3.94 feet. And he, when you look at the drawing, the grading is very hard to, to understand because with the grading, the um, they're saying that this foundation, because it's going up, it's going to be eight feet higher than the, my ground level right now at the front of the house. The back, that's not so much a problem. But when you look at his drawings and it goes all the way up, there's a line, there's even a window well, a window in his basement with a window well in front of it. And this all has to be covered with dirt. There's a minimum of four feet of dirt that has to cover this area. Well, if you've got only four feet to the property line, where's this dirt? First of all, how is it going to be put onto the bank? Because you're not supposed to put extra dirt on the bank. And how are they going to do that? Because even if they did like a retaining wall, a retaining wall has to be three foot 11 um, away from the property line. That's where the house is. So there's no more room. And I don't know about drainage. I'm worried about water coming down on from the, the roof down to my property. He's got another two foot overhang. So it's going to come across and it's all going to get dumped onto my property. And it's there's no way you can make a swell or anything because Long Point Conservation, I'm not too sure about Norcote, but Long Point says you have to contain your water. I had to put it in my eaves troughs. I have to have a pipe that takes the pipe all the way down to the lake to dispose of. You cannot have any water sitting on the top of the bank. So that's the other issue that's very serious. And 
know, there's a few more things here. Um, I don't know if an engineer has been on site. If they have, I'd like to see their report. I'd like to see a drain, proper drainage and grading report. Fabian sent me something. All it was was looking down at the property. I've seen that already. I need to have somebody come and explain that to me because I don't know if they've really studied this issue. Um, back in yeah, 2016, we're on hazard land and everybody else has been told to build on the footprint. And this is the first time that somebody has tried to exceed it. And I don't know why they are able to change this. So just to give you a heads up, we just have, we have one minute left and then we're going to have to move on to the other speakers. But I know everybody's taking some notes here with your concerns. Oh, the other thing that, that was very important in the drawing on the on the foundation drawing, they talk about tell posts. Um, they're mentioned in the drawing. I want to know how many there are. I also want to know if they are screwed in with a set um, tension or are they drilled down? Or are they pounded down? That vibration can make a big difference to my house. So I'm very concerned about that. And also there's a large tree stump right at the back of his property, right outside of his uh, porch. And he did have the tree cut down. And it was my understanding he was going to remove that tree, the tree stump. If he removes that tree stump, then there's going to be a lot of dirt around that. All, um, there, it's all going to fall down the slope, calling more, causing more erosion. So I'm very worried about the bank erosion as well as Irene. Um, I know this is all in my emails. I know you all should have a copy of this. And I'm not sure if I have anything else here or not. I am certainly concerned with the water. So it's the water and the the weight of this big building sitting on that slope. Everyone along on Kawana has, has always been worrying about the, the slope, the stability and the water. We all do everything we can. And the neighbor on the other side of me, he has catch basins made and that to control the water to go down to the lake. Um, I need to know that that's what he's going to do. I'm going to have to stop you there, if that's OK. Yes, I think that's probably the most of it anyway. And I'd like them to get my notes that I have sent by email. I have a question. I just want to pose to staff right now, even the clerk. Um, is there a reason that we didn't get a copy of the letters that were submitted? Three, three, I sent the first chair. one October the third. <clears throat> Two or three, you, Madam Chair. So the one that was sent on October the third, I, I truthfully didn't uh, know if that was like just general questions or comments. Um, but uh, recently, um, I've been in contact with Shirley, and she also sent me a, a another email indicating basically everything that she had just said. Um, but I was away yesterday, and I will be providing that to the clerk and council shortly after this meeting. Thanks, Fabian. I think it's always helpful for, for council, especially before these public hearings, to have a copy of concerns uh, from the residents. Um, I, would I, also, I, I see you, I, I, everyone, I'm, I'm not, it's just, the, it's a it's a public hearing, and unfortunately, yeah. there's a legislated process with how this happens. So it's not just to throw your hand up and everybody gets to speak at any time process. It's just the process that even I'm frustrated by it too sometimes that we have to follow. So we will move through the motions and follow the rules that are set out by the province on how this actually happens. Thank you. So thank you very much for your comments. Irene, I will give you the floor now if you could state your name and your address and you will have five minutes to speak. Again, I, I already had some at the beginning, but I just- it's okay, I'll give you another five. Perfect, thank you. Something that Shirley just said kind of um, stuck with me because the speaker on behalf, again, it was 18 Kiwanis, Irene Schiller. Something the speaker said was that Long Point had a hard time defining the top of the bank. 
I would say that's an accurate statement for my property. For 16 Kiwanis, it's pretty well defined where it is. And what made that stick out for me was that tree that Shirley referred to. Um, and, you know, I have many pictures of how that line has gone further and further, closer and closer to the house. And it's um, so it just is interesting to see that Long Point would say that the top of the bank at that property is very hard to define. Um, so I'm wondering if we can get further clarification on that. And I can also speak to the previous owners of the that property. They put their water, they had a pipe come out their eavesdrops and kind of to flow the water away, putting it into the bank onto my property, which caused a little bit of erosion at the top of mine. Um, but mine is much more graded than what the others are. So I was just wondering, right, if they could further explain how Long Point says that the top of the bank was hard to define. Okay, again, it's not a question and answer period. Oh, sorry. You have five minutes to make your comments as well, and we will come back with some questions for staff and look for some clarification at the end. This is just to get your and everybody's comments so they're put on public record. Right. So again, like I say, so I'm um, the next thing or another item that I kind of had concerns about too or questions about is that it's only going to be a three-story building into the lake. Um, but regrettably not for me and or potentially Shirley. I'm going to be looking at a three story unless these elevation charts are are not correct or not reflective of what we're actually going to see. Um, my porch window is going to look out and when I say porch, it's a sun porch. Uh, my porch window is going to look into now a three story building. 1.2 meters from the side of uh, from the property line. Um, I wondered, uh, so that's again what I'm going to be looking at. I'm wondering about the height of the building, what kind of cast shadows it's going to it's going to put. Um, and even something earlier that Fabian had said was that it's going to be replaced with a cottage. Oh, no, we don't want to call it a cottage. So I wondered if administration uh, is looking to change. Um, Rita Park from a former cottager to a more permanent residence and permanent residence with buildings that don't fit the landscape of what that property used to be, where they were cottages. And we certainly did not call this a cottage. So those are again, just a few other concerns that I had. Again, the changing of the landscape. And even for council, I wanted to know how this new development fits within the, uh, aligns with creating an optimal space for business. Why was that significant to put in the report and perhaps what type of business will be run out of this facility? I've heard the homeowner talk about Airbnb being it and you know is that maybe a cause also for the change in legis or the change in zoning? Some questions that I had. Nothing further. Nope, thank you. All right, thank you very much. Okay, whoever's next, the podium is yours. Hi, uh, my name is Odile Piquet and I'm at 16 Kiwanis Avenue. So I'm going to be basically, I'm just right in front of that unit. So which is like, again, I'm just going to repeat uh, the comments is the height of that unit. We are an historic neighborhood of cottages, one story house. Uh, and now I've got a three story in front of me sitting from property line from property line to property line. Uh, and it's right on uh, our neighbors. Uh, you know, each neighbors is going to be affected by it and I'm going to be affected by it. It's mostly that it's that historical neighborhood that we are in, and uh, that's that's my concern and my comments. It's the size of that unit, uh, because it even if it's called a two-story, it's going to be, from my my view, it's going to be two and a half because the the basement is already raised a few feet above uh, above the ground. So that's that's it. Thank you. Merci <laughs> beaucoup. Uh, whoever's next.
So my name is Dave Peebles, 2023 Maple Boulevard. So I am basically Irene's next neighbor, so to them. And to further uh, what was been said before, our neighborhood was established a long time ago. We're little houses, little cottages, and almost everybody with this big house, it will be almost three stories, two and a half stories on the roadside. And on where we're affected is at the back, the lake side. It's going to be a full three stories. So where we used to have privacy and the trees gave us the privacy, et cetera, we're now going to have on the third floor, a big deck looking into our yard, down a floor into our yard. And basically from the front of the house, they'll be able to even look into the back of the yards of the neighbors because we're all just one story, <laughs> except for this. So that's one issue that I have. And I just don't understand how it's being allowed to go from like maybe a one and a half story to basically a three story. And we've, we've now got basically a monster house, six bedrooms, two kitchens, um, I don't know, uh, three or four bathrooms, extremely large compared to what our little neighborhood is all about. My last concern is that this property has a deeded right away to every owner of Maple Grove property. And I just want to make sure that's maintained. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So I just want to be clear. I think there's a little bit of confusion. This isn't an approval today. So this is the first time even council is seeing this. This is an opportunity for you to provide your comments, your concerns, so that before a future staff report comes back for council to make a decision that they can take all of this and council's comments into consideration for that report. So as of today, there's not a three story house that's being built. It's again, this is to provide comments to go back to staff before they provide a recommendation to council. As the next person would like to come up. Anyone else? Well, we'll come back to that piece because there's a lot missing in this report that I find deeply troubling, but um, that's beside the point. So anyone else, sir, did you wish to come and speak? No? OK, so no other questions from any members of the public. All right, um, so I just uh, am curious. Fabian, are there other parts of this report then that council has not received? I've actually never you know, we're, we're, was there an email that went out that I missed or something? No, okay. I've never actually in my whole time, like I don't even know what to, there's not much to say. I don't really, people are talking about height and st I, I, I don't see any of that in here either myself. Um, so I'm just kind of curious why this report then was rushed through on a last meeting with nothing else on the agenda. True. I don't know how I don't know as a counselor how one could even provide comments on this because it, did this go to long point? We know nothing about what's. Through you, Madam Chair, so the application was deemed complete in August of 2020 and it's been circulated internally for staff comments. Um, the studies that the app that were required through the pre consultation meeting, the applicant submitted as part of their application. Uh, as the application being deemed complete and it was circulated for comments. Uh, there are some components <clears throat> such as the building height that I too uh, would like to ask the owner or the agent uh, if they had any more information surrounding the building height. Um, but in terms of the like the other components or application requirements such as the grading study and um, that that's being circulated to development engineering for comments. So why would this report come forward to Council for the public hearings without com comments from development engineering? I can sympathize with everybody here. I mean, if, if you've taken a ride down the shores of Lake Erie, you know, erosion is a pretty big concern. And so I, I sympathize with them and I, I don't know looking at this how I can even move a staff recommendation. I'm not really sure exactly what we're, we're looking for here. Maybe Tricia, you could fill in a few. Missing sure, papers. sure, Madam Chair. So uh, this is a residual file that came in in the period of time that I wasn't here, so I don't have a lot of information about the file specifically. So a couple things to clarify. 
Um, as already indicated, this is simply the public hearing portion. So a good opportunity to, to collect information from the community and uh, Fabian has been taking all of this and have already advised that whatever comes back to council in the form of some sort of recommendation will include a table that has collected all of these questions and concerns and will have specific responses to all of those items. Um, the challenge we've had is this was deemed complete in August and we're now in November. We wanted to work towards some sort of statutory, we're, we're pa long past our statutory time frame, so wanted to at least get this um, into the public forum and while we wait for comments from other departments. So all of those in things will be addressed before we come back for a recommendation um, to the satisfaction of staff. Uh, it may be we have a community meeting to, to have further discussions to make sure we're capturing all of the concerns, give the property owner and agents the opportunity to respond to or give additional information. So there definitely are some gaps here. The key was the reason it came to council is it's been uh, complete since August and we wanted to get that statutory piece completed uh, through the public hearing and give folks a chance to give their input. But I can advise that we will collect all of the information. We've been madly taking notes. We will address them and we will make sure that nothing comes back until it's been reviewed um, and there's comments from development engineering. So what is, if it's complete since August, what is the height then that everybody wants to know? Through you, Madam Chair, I, I also wanted to ask the agent the same question because when I reviewed the drawings, I. I also had a hard time determining what the height was itself. So I was essentially, so how I knew that other members of the public also had the same question. So I was hoping that that would be answered here in this public setting to give everyone the same answer at the same time for transparency. I just, let me just finish the string. So how can we have a public hearing committee meeting? This is soon gonna be, Mayor-elect Martin's problem, but um, <laughs> how can we have a public hearing meeting looking for a zoning, um, an official plan amendment uh, that doesn't even include any information that really, I mean, is basic information when you're going from a tiny little cottage to proposing a three-story and it's not even in a report for council to review. I, I'm, I'm just at a loss as to how council's even supposed to have a wholesome discussion on this matter. And again, especially given the nature of the slope along the shore. So through the chair, typically you're right, that information is included as attachments to the report. So I, I do apologize for that. I'm not sure why they weren't included. And typically also with our public hearings, they've been included when we upload on our web page. And I just noted that they weren't there as well. So there seems to have been a disconnect um, in that. I don't have an explanation other than some staff changes um, in uploading, but that has already been in the background noted to get those items uploaded. Um, so they were unfortunately pieces that were missed through this process. So what I'm going to ask everyone to do that's still here, uh, the clerk has asked that you stick around to leave your uh, name so that we have the proper spelling. We're going to get you to, to write that down. But if you would also like to leave a contact, uh, I'm sure that staff now will be happy to provide all of the information to all of council as well as uh, to each of you to address many of the questions uh, that were asked uh, today. Once that is done before staff, Tricia, you mentioned possibly having a community meeting. I think given the inadequacy of this report, that's probably a good idea for staff to pursue with those members um, before coming back for uh, the council meeting where there will be a staff recommendation. Um, so you will still have additional time to provide some of those comments. Uh, and I saw Councillor Huffman's hand up. I'm going to give you the floor. And then David, um, as is process. If you want to come back up, I will give you five more minutes to speak and you can try to answer some additional questions uh, for everyone today. So Councillor Huffman, go ahead. 
Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Chop. Through you, I, actually, you addressed some of my concerns because I'm thinking this is we're missing so much information here. I don't feel comfortable making any kind of recommendation going forward. So um, I think that those recommendations that you made in terms of um, dealing with uh, the planning department make sense. So I would be interested in hearing from Mr. Rowe for another five minutes. Uh, thank you. Um, actually, this is probably one of the most complete applications I've ever submitted. David, would you agree that the report is that complete? Uh, the, re okay. the, the report, as I look through it, I said. My, my justification report isn't here. The copies of the engineers uh, slope stability reports, the building plans, everything that I submitted including the the application uh, wasn't attached. Uh, if the question, the answer to the question as to building height is right on my application, it's 9.474 meters at the front elevation. Uh, I've submitted everything that I possibly could. This information was required by Long Point as well. So um, uh, it makes it difficult uh, uh, for people to, I guess, uh, raise concerns or ask questions uh, without the information. Uh, I do appreciate uh, that did have a complete application back in August. Uh, I have a lot happened between August and, and now, uh, but uh, uh, I would would think that uh, at the very least. Uh, uh, the uh, neighbors as well as uh, as council members should have a complete package of, of of the application. As I said, it was one of the most complete applications I've ever submitted. Quite frankly. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Councillor Columbus. Thank you, well, Mr. Rowe. I've got a couple of questions here. It was mentioned by some of the residents the word basement a couple times. Is there a basement? under this building uh, at the present time. Yes, I believe no, there isn't a basement now, but we would put a basement with a walkout. Uh, that's basement. how it's actually a two story with a walkout base. So there'd be two stories over top of the base. Yes, that's okay. correct. Yeah. And uh, can we get an indication of what the footprint, the difference between the old footprint is and the new footprint? Well, actually it is um, one of the drawings that uh, what I had the uh, surveyor do was uh, uh, take the, uh, the existing footprint and then uh, do an outline of the proposed footprint. So it's actually shown on, on the drawings that we submitted. And someone mentioned a potential bed and breakfast. Is that in the cards? I'm not aware of that. Thank you, Madam Chair. Sure. Further questions? Go ahead. Thank you. Um, just uh, on the proposal of the home itself, um, when I hear the terms two kitchens, six bedrooms, um, do you have a significant sized family or um, what is the real the purpose? Um, will you be using it? Will the, the applicant be using it as a family cottage? Okay. Hello, everyone. Madam Mayor. Councilors, thank you for giving me a moment to speak. Um, I do have a large family, and it is actually the intention for us to retire in Port Dover. So it, the intention is to build our retirement home. I have uh, intentions when we do finally receive some form of approval to make it wheelchair accessible, hence why the first floor actually has a first floor um, bathroom fully uh, wheelchair accessible. My mother-in-law has had a stroke and a heart attack, so she stays with us, and my mother uh, who currently lives beside me would, you know, if God willing she's alive, would be with us. And also then that would be why we have additional living and private space to separate the uh, two mothers of the family, if you would. So that's the rationale. And yes, we have a fairly substantial uh, family. So. Any further questions? All right, thank you, sir. You're welcome, thank you. So I guess, 
Um, Fabian and Tricia, one of the challenges today is if this information was uh, had been included in this report as it should have been. Um, the challenge is, is when people spoke today, their questions were all, you know, I want to know what the height is when the really the purpose of the public hearings committee should be. I don't like that height. I want it to be less than that height. Um, and so they've all wasted their time with their question period and comments for the report asking questions as opposed to stating their opinions. Uh, so that's where this really this committee meeting has fallen drastically short of what it should have been uh, about. So Tricia, maybe you can provide some assistance for how we're going to help to rectify that situation so that once the public and once all of council gets the completed application, which I trust Mr. Rowe's been around for a long time. If he says this is the most incomplete application he's ever done, I believe him. Uh, so once everybody gets all of the information that apparently is out there to be had, um, how will the public then that we can reassure them that they will get the opportunity to provide their actual comments on the application itself before the recommendation comes forward? Uh, thank you. Madam Chair, so what is going to happen, what has already started is uh, Fabian will be working to upload all the appropriate documents that should have been up, uh, uploaded when the report was uploaded on the planning page. Um, typically that information should have been uploaded uh, two weeks ago. Um, we will make sure that folks in attendance uh, pr are provided with the link and if they need an alternative format, a paper copy, we can accommodate that as well. Uh, Fabian will reach out to those who want to have further discussions to get that information. We will collect it all in a table format and all of the items will be addressed in, uh, through the staff recommendation report um, in collaboration with the applicant um, and the agent as appropriate. So there's some conversations that Fabian will be facilitating with the agent and applicant. They've heard the comments right now, so they may want to take a pause and perhaps readjust what they're doing. Um, but we also need to make sure we're addressing all of the concerns that we are hearing um, and that Fabian has the information he needs to provide an appropriate recommendation report to council. We don't want to bring something back that is missing information. Um, so that is what uh, I've been organizing right now as we speak um, and that will be addressed immediately. Our apologies that it was missed. Um, hopefully it doesn't happen again. Uh, I can't explain why it happened. It did, and we're doing our best to uh, respond accordingly right now. OK, thanks very much, Tricia. Um, so when I read the motion today, don't everybody panic. The motion is simply uh, that staff report CD 22-095 for development application OPNPL 2022-254 and ZNPL 2022-255 be received for information. And further, that any comments received as part of the statutory public meeting be considered in the future recommendation uh, for the staff report. So I need a mover and a seconder for that. Councillor Van and Rishi, seconded by Councillor Michelli. All those in favor? That's carried. And again, as I've asked each of you, if you can, the clerk is going to get you a piece of paper, leave your contact information, and we will get all of those files to each of you. And we will ensure there's another opportunity to be able to provide your comments uh, to staff after reviewing the actual file. And with that, um, I think that's it. Councillor Huffman, motion to adjourn, seconded by Councillor Taylor. All those in favor, that's carried. That was an unexpected last meeting meeting.